Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, certain things uh, about financial forecasting and forecasting in, in general. All right, so what is forecasting? Well, forecasting is nothing but predicting something uh, for future, right? So many a times, uh, it is important to know things beforehand to take an, uh, to take, uh, an important decision. So, um, hence, uh, we often confuse or we often use uh, forecasting and prediction uh, interchangeably. They are essentially the same. Okay. So, what are the, uh, you know, why, why do uh, one need to do forecasting or build a forecasting model? What are the things that one need to forecast in, in, in the field of finance and how is forecasting done? Okay, so these are the three important questions that one would come across while uh, understanding uh, the uh, financial forecasting. So why does one uh, need a forecasting model in finance? Well, in finance, uh, you, uh, you know, one need to take a lot of decision uh, for future. Right. So, what should be the cash reserve for the bank? So, how much uh, you know uh, cash the bank should keep in hand to avoid bankruptcy or to avoid insolvency? How many customers the bank would expect uh, uh, that uh, you know the customers will default in the next quarter? So, how many default or delinquent customers are going to be there in the next quarter or the next year? is also an important thing. Who is to be given loan and who is not to be given loan? That is also one sort of a prediction for future. So these are important decisions the bank managers take uh, for future. And that's why prediction or forecasting is very important. So a number of financial decisions are taken for future and hence scientifically forecasting what is going to happen in future of course there is an uncertainty associated with uh, forecasting but that will be uh, the best uh, prediction that you can make so if you are doing uh, it using most scientific or mathematical model then you will be sure of one thing that if something goes wrong that is due to the random uncertainty but the pattern in the history has been captured in the model Okay, so that's why you do forecasting. So what are the things that one need to do forecasting in, in finance? I have already said you need, uh, you need forecasting uh, or you need forecast for a uh, lot of things, a lot of uh, values and events. Okay, so these are two important things. One is, uh, one is value, certain financial values and the other one is the events. Okay, in the values you need return. Okay, stock market return. So a number of times you would be uh, you know investing your money on stock market or indexes, or the banks will be you know uh, investing uh, the money that you have deposited uh, in the account in some um, portfolio. So portfolio return is something that is forecasted using um, a forecasting model. A revenue, okay, banks revenue, uh, financial institutions revenue loss is an important thing. To, to monitor and especially regulators uh, keep an eye on this. Default. Default is an event. So this is not value. These are all values. Return, revenue, loss. These are values. Whereas the default is an event. Similarly, delinquency is an event or payoff is an event. Okay. Collection event. Uh, Somebody is, you know, uh, paying off the loan on time. That's also an event. So that also need to be, uh, need forecasting. How is forecasting done? Primarily, uh, you will come across two types of forecasting. One is the time series forecasting. The other one is the regression based forecasting. So in time series, you will be using the AR, MA, ARMA, ARIMA uh, sort of models or exponential smoothing. Whereas um, regression based models are nothing but your linear regression, you know, quantile regression, uh, Bayesian regression and so on. All right. So there are two uh, basic type of uh, forecasting techniques used uh, in the industry and academia. One is the structural forecasting, which is what I was talking here, regression based forecasting. The other one is the time series forecasting. Well, the basic difference between these two is that in time series, you only use the same variable. 
so that's the univariate time series okay yt and sometimes you use multivariate like you know you use xt as well okay for as regression based model or more, more multivariate model we'll have a functional form something like this y equal to alpha plus beta x where there is no t here there is no time component here it's just the cross sectional component it's just data for one time period okay and there will be multiple variables in the right hand side or as an independent so these are structural models, so most of the regression model like linear regression, uh, you know, polynomial regression and so on. Whereas time series model just, you know, uses the same variable, uh, the lags of the same variable or just uses the time series components of other uh, independent variables for forecasting. So that's the basic difference between these two types of models. Uh, so forecasting models are basically... Uh, of you know divided into different times based on certain uh, criteria so first one would be the time horizon okay uh, sometimes you will want forecast for the next time period let's say you have like data for uh, t1 to t100 you have a data point for 100 uh, time periods so you might be interested in only t101 right so that is short term Forecast or maybe T101, T102, and T103. So that is only the next three period is what we want. That's short term forecast. Whereas sometimes there would be long term forecast. That means, you know, farther away, like let's say six months or 12 months uh, farther from the current period. So that is long term forecast. So based on the time horizon for which you are doing forecast, these are divided into long term forecasting models and the short term forecasting models. The other one, the other way of, uh, you know, classifying models, forecasting, forecasting models are the model structure and we have already talked about this, time series and structure, okay, so that, that's different. Forecast value is one way in which also we divide, the, uh, so there are two types of, uh, uh, you know, forecasting models based on the forecast value, what exactly you want to forecast, one is point estimate, uh, sorry, point forecast and the other one is the interval forecast. And it's important to understand this. In the point uh, uh, point forecast, you simply want one value to be forecasted. Okay, so that's like uh, you want to know the stock price, stock price for a particular period. Okay, um, or you, you want um, certain uh, you want to know how certain values it would be stock price, revenue, or whatever. For a particular period in in future, so that's point forecast. That means you simply want one exact value, okay, and you don't compare it with anyone. Okay, that's point forecast. Interval forecast, on the other hand, in the interval forecast, you want forecast within certain range. Okay, so you just want to know if your forecast values lies between these range values with certain confidence in it. So that means let's say there are two values, v1 and v2. We want your forecast, let's say the forecast is ST hat, this lies between these two values, V1 and V2 or not. Okay, with certain confidence, of course. Confidence could be the confidence interval, 95% confidence or 99% confidence interval, and so on. So that is where uh, the interval forecast is different from. That is how it's different from the point forecast. And the uh, next one is the sample. Based on the sample that you are doing, you can have in sample forecast and out sample forecast. But then these are not different types per se, just that is the way you do the modeling. And we'll see more in the next slide about in sample and out sample forecast. So, how to build a uh, more, uh, forecasting model? Now, you can use as if you can go through uh, the time series analysis in this particular channel, you will come across, uh, you know, you will come across a lot of forecasting techniques like AR, uh, MA. Uh, ARMA, uh, ARIMA, exponential smoothing, and so on. So go to the uh, playlist, time series forecasting playlist in this channel, and you can you get to learn uh, the theory and the application of all these things. Okay. You can also use the regression based forecast. That's also there in the regression uh, playlist in this particular video. And if you want to learn more about this, you can always contact us. You can you can always contact us through our email ID, which is there in the description. <coughs>
so in the forecasting model basically uh, uh, is uh, no matter whether you are using structural mod uh, models or the time series models is done basically in one particular period what you do is that you take the entire time period let's say we are doing the time series forecast and then we um, divide it into two samples one we call it as training sample the other one we call it as holdout sample and why is that so because you want to build a model in training data training uh, data um, which which contains some part of the population data and then you want to test it in another data set because the model that is uh, you know built using uh, training data will most likely do well there but what is the guarantee that it is going to do well in the new data hence we keep a separate data set we call it as a holdout sample in which we test it and check if uh, it is matching the uh, actual value so it is whether its the accuracy is there or not so let's say there are 10 time periods so we take let's say six time of it so 60 70 percent of the data we take as training data and we build the model okay let's say we build some sort of an ar model okay okay so we use this model ar model and then we estimate we find the values for you know t7 t8 t9 and uh, t10 okay so these are in the holdout sample okay now you will have two values one the actual values because these are minded this is historical data so you will have actual values and then you have predicted values okay and then you can compare if they are same or the same or not if the uh, difference is less then it is a good model or else it is not so that has to be consistent so we measure the, the accuracy of the model uh, to judge if the model is good or not so how do you judge how do you find out the accuracy you find out the forecast error which is nothing but the difference in the actual uh, uh, minus um, the predicted okay so that's the error forecast error okay and uh, in in industry uh, you know you know you can actually uh, people use the aggregation of this i mean you, you cannot simply add them up for all these values that means forecast error for t7 t8 t9 and t10 you can simply add them up because sometimes it's going to be negative sometimes it's going to be positive and then they might cancel okay so what you do is that simply square it and then add it so that's how you calculate it okay so we simply square the error okay whatever it comes so that everything becomes positive and then you just add it up okay and that is nothing but known as the mean square error in sort known as msc is known as the mean square error and the model which has least mean square error is the best one so you can use multiple models multiple uh, modeling techniques structural and then in structural itself there could be varieties of algorithms and then in a time series, you can use AR, MA, ARMA, ARIMA, exponential smoothing. So you just all use all these models and see the one which is giving the least mean square error for the holdout sample. Remember the holdout sample. Test the mean square error for the holdout sample, not the training sample. And see if it is the least and that is the final model. All right. So we learned a couple of things about forecasting. What is forecasting? How is it different from uh, how is it used in the financial service industry, what are the different types of forecasting and how is the forecasting model built. Now there are some questions for you and you can try it out and if you don't get the answers, just write to us, you know, there is an email ID in the, uh, in the description and just write to us. So when do we, you use a structural forecast over time series forecast, right? We talked about the two types of forecast, structural forecast and time series forecast. How are the different? Which one performs better in which scenario? So, what is the scenario in which you will be using structural forecast and what is the scenario in which you will be using time series forecast? Okay, so that's the first question for you. The second question is, can you combine this structural and time series forecasting uh, models and, you know, build a single model? So, can you have a single model which combines structural forecast plus time series forecast? Is it possible? Okay, can you have both in the same model? So these are the questions left to you. If you have an interesting answer, please send it to us. The email ID is there in the description section. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to our channel for more video. And if you want to learn more, you want to learn more about time series forecasting, do write to us. We have good content on time series forecasting um, using um, different softwares. Uh, so please contact us if you want to uh, learn. 
and here is our email id and you can also get the email id in the description section thank you so much